All right, we are less than 20 days away from Gotham Knights, so I want to get really up to date on all the news leading up to the game. I want to cover the game when it launches, talk about all the post-launch content, and I'm really excited to move forward talking about Gotham Knights. Please be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoy the Gotham Knights content on my channel. I'll, of course, be covering other games as well, but this month in particular, I'm really going to be focused on Gotham Knights since that's the game that is releasing. So as we all know, the big catalyst of the plot of Gotham Knights is that Bruce Wayne is dead. That's how they kicked off their reveal trailer. It's a contingency video left by Bruce Wayne telling the Bat family essentially that he is dead and that the Bat family, the Gotham Knights, are going to have to pick up the slack in Gotham. They're going to have to continue his crusade without him. But there was another death in that reveal trailer that was confirmed that I do not think has gotten enough attention. And it does make sense because Batman is, of course, the headlining character of the Batman mythology. And so to kill off the main character is, of course, going to overshadow any secondary character's death. But Commissioner Gordon has also been confirmed to be dead in this universe. And it would be a much bigger talking point, I think, if Bruce Wayne himself wasn't also dead. But since he is the bigger, more popular character, he is getting the most attention, the most fan theories. But I also think it's worth noting that Commissioner Gordon's death is quite meaningful, not only in the sense that it changes the landscape of Gotham City and the dynamics therein between the Gotham Knights and the Gotham City Police Department, as Commissioner Gordon really kept the peace between them, and now the police don't trust the Bat family, and there's going to be some tension there. And without Commissioner Gordon's influence, a lot of corruption seems to have seeped potentially back into the Gotham City Police Department as well. And you also get that narrative side of it where Commissioner Gordon is actually Batgirl, Barbara Gordon's father. And with that death, that is clearly going to influence her character arc in the story and really be integral to her character development, I believe. So we're going to get to see her reaction to the death of Commissioner Gordon, and it will also be interesting to see Alfred's response not only to Bruce Wayne, his master's death, but also Commissioner Gordon's death. It will be interesting to see if Alfred had really any correspondence with Commissioner Gordon in this universe and if that death impacts him in really any way. But again, ultimately, the death of Commissioner Gordon is going to be an interesting thing to look at, again, in how it ripples across Gotham City, how the criminals view that. Because in many ways, Commissioner Gordon ends up becoming what Harvey Dent couldn't in a lot of stories, where Harvey Dent was kind of the white knight of Gotham who was going to put criminal to rest. Finally, he was going to get rid of the mob and all of the corruption and really root it out and make Gotham a very respectable city once again. He, of course, becomes Two-Face and instead leans into the corruption and turns to crime himself. But Commissioner Gordon does a pretty good job, again, of uprooting the criminals and the corruption within the police department. He really does a good job cleaning it up. And in terms of how criminals view him in the city, they don't really like him. They are somewhat intimidated by him a lot of the time because they know that they can't buy him off and they know that he is very smart in his tactics. And the fact that he is willing to work with Batman, I think also scares a lot of criminals is they fear Batman. And so then to have a police commissioner say, yeah, and I'm going to let him go after you, you know, that's intimidating. So to see Commissioner Gordon and Batman dead, I think will give criminals a lot of inspiration to not only go back to their criminal roots, but to go above and beyond. We're even seeing that quite a bit with villains like Mr. Freeze and Harley Quinn, who appear to be going bigger and bolder and more super villain-esque than they really ever have been portrayed. And again, I think a lot of focus has been put on how the city will respond to Batman's death, but I think that it was important to also kill off Commissioner Gordon in that now there really isn't even a trace of Batman left in the city because Commissioner Gordon worked so closely with Batman that it could be argued that he could, from the GCPD, continue Batman's legacy and that maybe they'd done enough work in their careers to really get Gotham to a somewhat stable place. And so for both of them to be gone, it's going to really put the city into chaos. And now the Gotham Knights, the Bat family, who have been the sidekicks working with Renee Montoya, who has never really been the Commissioner Gordon role in the Batman stories. And then to have them teaming up against the villains like Harley Quinn, who have never necessarily been the main villain of Batman stories, who are now trying to find their own criminal enterprise and they're trying to find their own brand and really become their own supervillains and nemesis for these new 
heroes. And one more thing that I really wanted to touch on is I think that Commissioner Gordon's death could actually play a lot into the mystery of the Court of Owls. Now, we don't know who killed Commissioner Gordon. There have been a few different death of Commissioner Gordon stories over the years through various forms of media. In some stories, he's killed by the Joker. In some, he's killed by Mr. Freeze. And in Gotham Knights, that certainly could be the case. It could be the Joker's doing. It could be Mr. Freeze's doing. Joker in this universe seems to have been busy. It's assumed that he's the one who paralyzed Batgirl for a time and the one who killed Jason Todd. And so if he also is responsible for the death of Commissioner Gordon, that would add another reason for these characters to hate him, even though he is going to not be in the game, which has been confirmed by the developers, unless they're just not being honest about that. We'll see. We'll see when the game comes out if Joker's in it. I think they're probably being true to their word. But the other characters that I think could have killed Commissioner Gordon are the Court of Owls. Now, of course, I think that this has kind of been the assumption for a long time. There was that story trailer where Penguin mentioned that both Batman and Commissioner Gordon thought they had a handle on the city, but didn't. And so it's sort of insinuated that they were both on the hit list of the Court of Owls. But with that being said, it could really be interesting as it's implied in that reveal trailer that Gordon died pretty long before Bruce Wayne did. And that we don't really know how long. It could be six months. It could be a few years but maybe it's the case that ended up getting Batman too deep in with the Court of Owls. Maybe Commissioner Gordon was looking into the Court of Owls, starting to uncover their secrets in the city, and ended up getting killed, and it was his death, that investigation that Batman was following, that got him into trouble with the Court of Owls. Or maybe he's going undercover to see if Commissioner Gordon is still alive or something. But in terms of deaths, if Commissioner Gordon actually died before Batman at the hands of the Court of Owls, that could largely evolve his significance in the story. I think he probably has a larger role. Even if he's dead, I think that his death will have a larger impact than maybe we've been sold in the marketing. And even in the marketing, they keep showing his statue. They, again, told us in the very first trailer that he was dead. And so I wouldn't be surprised if Commissioner Gordon's death means a lot more in this game than we've been led to believe. It's all been headlined by Batman's dead, Batman's dead, oh yeah, and Commissioner Gordon's dead too, but they've made sure to drive home the point that Commissioner Gordon is dead. So I think that there's likely much more that they're not sharing with us about that fact. Again, I'm really interested to see how the death of Commissioner Gordon changes the landscape of Gotham, both from how the villains of the city react to it, how the police react to it, how the knights and Alfred react to it, and how it leads into the story of the Court of Owls, and if perhaps his death is actually the catalyst of the story, and if perhaps his death is the mystery that we're really going to be solving even more than Batman's. We'll have to see when we get our hands on the game. I think that Batman has a better chance of coming back in the story than Gordon, but we'll have to wait and see. I'm, again, really excited to see what they've done. It's such a unique and interesting take on the lore and the mythology, and I can't wait to experience it. But that's all I've got for you guys today. Please be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments below what you think about the death of Commissioner Gordon in Gotham Knights, and we will see you guys in the next one.